Okay, can everybody hear me? Cool. So um, if you were at the introductory session um, a little earlier this afternoon, Dan Wendland talked about some lightning talks that our distribution vendors will do. So uh, this is that session. And I'm Dan Floria. I'm part of the OpenStack team at VMware. So um, let's get started. Uh, before actually we, we go into the presentations from all the vendors that we have up here, I just wanted to give another plug for the hands-on lab that we have for uh, VMware running on vSphere. So this was mentioned earlier also, and I think it's, it may be showing up in your um, schedule as, as also happening in this room. So the hands-on lab is something that you can do yourself, so you can log in. The URL is up there. Um, you can try it out if you need help with the hands-on lab. Uh, what the hands-on lab is, it's probably the easiest way for you to, um, to try out OpenStack with the vSphere platform. Um, actually, it's probably the easiest way to try out OpenStack, period. You just go to that tiny URL, and um, it, it just sets up an environment for you ready to go, uh, ready with vSphere lying underneath. And, and uh, um, Anyway, uh, it's very easy for you to get started, and if you need any help, there's people in the back of the room or maybe in the outside room as well um, if you have any questions. And there's also the IRC channel. You can get help that, that way as well. So um, this session is, um, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's uh, for our distribution partners to highlight the great work that they've done to support the VMware, uh, VMware technologies. So um, we're actually really excited about this. We, we want to provide customers with the choice of how they want to deploy um, OpenStack on top of the vSphere platform. So we want to provide you with a choice of what distribution you want to use. Um, so I'm really excited to have all the folks up here to talk about the, the great work that they've been doing. And it's actually a, a lot of work to support an additional platform. There's a lot of work that goes into modifying the deployment tools that they have and to building the engineering expertise and building a support organization to support a, a, the, the, a new platform. So um, they've done a lot of great work and they have a challenge right now to present all the great work that they've done in about five minutes or so. So these are lightning talks. They're going to be quick. Um, and hopefully, I can get the slides to work. So without further ado, um, I want to introduce Dave Russell from Canonical, who's going to come up here and talk to you about uh, Canonical's work. Thanks a lot, Dan. Me... Every hear me here? Let me see. How about now? That sounds a bit better. Hear me at the back? All right, good stuff. So this is all about um, Canonical and the amazing work we've been doing um, with VMware on OpenStack. <laughs> Thank you. So hopefully, um, a lot of you know who Canonical is. But just in case, um, Canonical is the company behind Ubuntu. Um, we're also known as the great big orange stand with the cool orange boxes on it. If you haven't seen them yet, go down and take a look. Ten node cluster in a box, very cool. So um, we're a uh, we're sort of we've been around for a little while since 2004. Over 600 people, over 30 countries. We're a very very widely distributed uh, organisation. We've got people. Um, all over the globe, but we've got major offices in the locations above. Um, we're also very much, um, you know, very much around the Ubuntu platform. So we see it very much as a, a platform for innovation. Um, a lot of the cool new uh, technologies that are coming up, um, a lot of big data, a lot of NoSQL, um, a lot of great stuff like, oh, I don't know, OpenStack um, starts very first on Ubuntu. Um, nine out of ten OpenStack production clouds are running on Ubuntu. We've been supporting um, uh, customers in production with OpenStack, including very demanding financial services, telcos, and other folks, um, for in excess of two years now. So we've been 
sort of supporting OpenStack and supporting customers using OpenStack for quite some time. We're also a fairly significant part of the public guest story as well. So this is really about um, our partnership with VMware and the work we've done together on OpenStack. Um, we were the, uh, the first company to announce um, our relationship with VMware a year ago now at, uh, at the Portland ODS, in fact, uh, during the keynote, uh, where we announced that we would be working jointly together on VMware and OpenStack engagements. Uh, we were the first company to actually do uh, an engagement jointly with VMware, and we'll have a little snippet on that a little bit later. And uh, I'd like to share with you um, a couple of high-level architectures that we've kind of come along with. We've um, engaged with certain customers, and these are things that we found really work for us. So the first one um, is basically everything virtualized on VMware vSphere. Um, I'm sure VMware have been telling you all today about the great reasons why you'd want to do this. Um, but uh, we found this has been pretty effective. Organizations that are already incredibly familiar with VMware, but want to start to get a taste of that OpenStack goodness, um, this is definitely the, the, the recommended way to go about it. So you've got um, a VMware vSphere management cluster. You've got installations of the Ubuntu server OS on top of that. And on top of that, you've got all of the OpenStack services and then the Ubuntu management and orchestration services on top of that. And then on, the, uh, on your right-hand side here, you've got a separate uh, vSphere cluster or even several vSphere clusters that are then talking through the OpenStack Nova Compute Driver and being driven by the OpenStack environment. And of course, you can then run anything you like on top of that. So that can be, as you see here, Ubuntu server guests, other enterprise Linux um, guests, or even Windows server guests. So that's option A. Option B is, um, you know, run your OpenStack services on physical servers. Um, run, uh, so that's Ubuntu on top of that, and all your standard OpenStack services and then have all of that talking to a VMware vSphere environment. So the only difference between A and B is pretty much um, OpenStack services here on physical versus being virtualized in vSphere. You know, different organizations have different levels of comfort with introducing uh, something new into their environment. So this suits some people better. Some people have different ideas as to how they want to scale out their environment. And again, this suits some of them better. And then finally, this is what I call the kind of the rainbows and unicorns. This is what everybody's, like a, a lot of people I find are really wanting to drive towards. They want something where they've got the core OpenStack services, probably on physical bare metal. They want, um, they want the VMware vSphere environment. They've got key things that they want to run on that. It gets them HA for those things and it's important to them. And also, they're wanting to either dip their toes into or they already have some existing KVM. And for that case, again, you've got um, a complete parity of platforms. You've got a single OpenStack environment that can talk to all of these different pieces. So I want to very, very quickly whisk you through um, a single customer deployment story that we did jointly with our friends at VMware. So this is a, a customer who wanted to, um, they had an existing infrastructure as a service platform. They'd uh, you know, prototyped it basically with their organization. They could see there was an immense demand for it, but they really needed something a bit more robust. And so OpenStack was the, the obvious answer. Um, they, uh, they chose to go for that option A, everything virtualized on VMware, including the core OpenStack services. Um, and you know, the implementation and the results they did, a, they did a really excellent job with this. Um, we provided them consultancy and services. VMware provided uh, expertise on their side. And a couple of things they did really well. They had really good internal stakeholders. They got everybody together on their side, on our side, on the VMware side. And we made sure that together we made this project a success, which of course it was. Um, we learned a couple of interesting lessons um, initially when we deployed it. So this was a large financial services organization uh, in the US. And uh, initially when we deployed OpenStack, um, we did not have SSL encryption from start to finish. 
uh, all the way through the OpenStack environment. This was something that was important to them. Luckily, due to the way that we deploy um, OpenStack, whether it's on bare metal, virtualized guests, or indeed on VMware, we use our charms and Juju. We just needed to alter the charms a little bit. A week later, rolled out upgraded versions of the charms, all redeployed. So great lessons. And future outlook, the project's expanding, the customer's expanding, and uh, it's all ongoing. That's it. Thanks very much. Thanks, Dave. So uh, next we have Andrew from Red Hat who's going to be talking about their efforts. Um, let's see. Can we plug in your remote? Okay, good afternoon. I'm Andy Cathro. I look after the virtualization product management team at Red Hat. You all know who Red Hat are and what we do. I want to quickly start with how we do it. I think it's important. So there are four steps that we take to go from a um, This is where I criticize Max and talk about winning Linux. <laughs> Here we go. So four steps that we take to go from a, um, an upstream project to a downstream um, enterprise product. The first, and in my mind, the most important is participation. So you believe you have to participate and engage at all aspects of the community to be able to support your customers. Right? It's not as simple as compiling and shipping code. There's a bar that we set at Red Hat before we can ship a product that involves engineers and QAs actively engaged in the product. Now, OpenStack is more than just Python services that are running and doing orchestration. It's running on top of Linux. There's a messaging layer, a database layer, user space libraries. Each one of those has to be integrated, tested, and supported. If you get a bug, and it's not an OpenStack bug, but it's something in Cupid or in Rabbit or in MariaDB or Galera, you can't say upstream issue. You have to own the issue from soup to nuts. So we believe you have to have broad and deep participation. Integration is taking all those upstream components, be they from, from Linux, from OpenStack and other projects, putting them together and integrating those to make sure they work. But also filling the gaps. There's many gaps that aren't filled by upstream OpenStack. You know, installers, high availability, you know, monitoring and reporting. So it's filling those gaps to put together a complete solution. And then stabilize, so that's testing, certification, bug fixing and backporting. And finally, delivery, and that means not just give you the product, but support you, give you the patches, the bug fixes when you need them, not on an upstream dev schedule, the services and the training. So there are two distributions from Red Hat. RDO is our community distribution. It's published on the upstream six-month cadence with a six-month life cycle. Anyone can download that, install that on Fedora, CentOS, RHEL, or any RHEL derivative distribution. It's on the upstream schedule and life cycle. There's no commercial support. There's a very vibrant community around it. And then RHEL OSP is our commercial distribution, enterprise hardened, long life cycle, certification and support ecosystem. When we talk about life cycle, why is it important? So upstream has a six month life cycle. We know about the cadence. We're here celebrating Ice House this week. Roughly six months from now, there'll be no more upstream patches from Icehouse. And if you have a bug, well, you should go to Juno. That's not good enough for enterprise deployments. You need to have a longer life cycle. You'll see here a two month gap between upstream in April and downstream in June. And this two months is used for testing, bug fixing, backporting, and certification. Now any bugs we find here, we fix you know, in trunk. 
and then we backport them to our stable branch, support that for three years. Quickly around deployment, three projects to mention. The first is Packstack, a very simple tool for deployments on POCs. You run a command line tool, you answer some questions, and it will deploy a single node or multi-node cloud. Great for POCs. For production deployments, we have Red Hat OpenStack Installer based on Foreman, boot a USB key or a CD-ROM, and just go through a wizard, see the nodes it's discovered, compute nodes, service node, configure them, check box for HA, and you're fully deployed. And finally, Triple O, which is the upstream deployment and management project. It's still work in progress. I hope it's going to be tech preview by the time we get to Juno, but we're heavily invested upstream on Triple O. So releases, so we have got new Mavic releases. So REL OSP4 is our Havana release, released back in, in December. Um, I'll talk in a minute about this, but our async3 update added support for vCenter. Um, the release that we're concentrating on now is REL OSP5, our Icehouse release. is in beta right now. will be coming out GA in June. Runs in REL6 and REL7. A couple of notable features, we added support for RabbitMQ in addition to Cupid. So you can pick a messaging platform now. And add a support for MariaDB instead of MySQL with Galera for active active support. Let me skip this for a second, I'm going to run out of time. So VMware's been working with Red Hat for many, many years now. I think it was the first hypervisor we supported before Zen, before KVM, before, before Amazon. So there's a long time engineering relationship between Red Hat and VMware. That means if you get, you've got a, a rel guest running on top of VMware and there's a bug, we have the engineers to triage and work together upstream to fix those issues. It's a similar model to what we're working on with, with OpenStack support. We're not a compile and ship company. Before we can add support for any platform such as the vCenter driver, we have to have engineers working on the code base. So go back a few months when we started down this path with VMware, we looked at the upstream backlog and then we coordinated with VMware engineering to make sure that the code reviews are being done, we're participating in those, participating in bug fixes. So what we're delivering now we can support for three years and we know it's a more polished product than if we'd compiled and shipped at a startup of Anna. So what we support today in Red OS P4 with the um, Async 3 update is deploying the vCenter driver. Now we, this is not the ESX direct driver, we're only supporting the vCenter driver, that's the one that's got the upstream support and backing of VMware, along with NSX. We do have Nova network support, but that's considered more for PSC deployments with the vCenter driver. We've got maybe a minute and a half left for questions, any questions I can answer? So one quick quickly thing, I mentioned Packstack, now been updated, so you can quickly deploy um, a Packstack based um, OpenStack deployment with vCenter, our triple O, not triple O, so excuse me, our Foreman based installer, still work in progress, we should that as a, our first async update for Red OS P5 to add the vCenter support. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So next we have Pete from Suze. Um, can you find it? <laughs> okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, one, I'm Pete Chadwick from SUSE. Uh, we are also a, a long time uh, Linux distribution. I hope everyone has at least heard of the, uh, of the Green Chameleon before. Uh, what I want to start off with was VMware and SUSE have worked together for a very long time, um, uh, at least for 10 plus years. Um, similar to Red Hat, we've supported SUSE Linux Enterprise Server running on VMware um, really from the beginning. And SUSE Linux Enterprise Server is fully supported to run in a vSphere environment. Um, and we integrate all the tools that you need to really take an op to optimize use of that, of that uh, vSphere environment. Um, one of the things that we actually have done is we work very closely with, with VMware and all of VMware's um, 
virtual appliance um, applications actually run on SUS Linux Enterprise Server. Uh, so if you, read, if you run vCenter um, virtual appliance, um, you're actually running SUS Linux Enterprise uh, in your environment. Um, we have a number of, of extensions to SUS Enterprise Server, including SAP, uh, which uh, can support running SAP virtualized on top of uh, VMware. Uh, we also have a high availability extension to SUS Linux Enterprise, which complements the capabilities that you have in, uh, in VMware to provide application level um, availability in, for mission critical um, applications. Lastly, since what we're here to talk about today is, is SUSE Cloud, um, which is our um, OpenStack implementation. Um, so this is kind of a high level view of the uh, VMware support within OpenStack. And you can see the, the pieces that we, uh, we um, support. All the stuff in light green is essentially basic um, OpenStack. And the things that are highlighted in kind of this yellow are the drivers that um, you can take advantage of to, to access your vSphere environment. Um, we support all of those. So you can easily uh, deploy um, SUSE Cloud, uh, which uh, the current release is SUSE Cloud 3 based upon uh, Havana. Uh, you can deploy that, take advantage of an existing vSphere environment through the vCenter drivers. Uh, in terms of capabilities over and above uh, what you get with the vCenter uh, implementation, uh, we also started shipping high availability for the control plane, which really we think complements um, the environment. Most of our customers, I would say about 80% of our customers, actually run SUSE Linux Enterprise Server on VMware. Uh, it's clearly the most prevalent uh, hypervisor that our customers run and they're running mission critical applications in that environment. So when they start looking at how do I want to move to OpenStack, the first thing they told us was I need a highly available control plane. Uh, so that's one of the things we have focused on. Um, and we've also simplified the deployment not only of that, but also of, uh, of vCenter in your environment. So this is, this is actually a screenshot from uh, the SUSE Cloud Administration Server, which is our uh, installation framework, our deployment tool built upon Crowbar. And you can see, well, probably the guys in the back of the room can't see, um, but if you want to come by the, by the booth, we can give you a demo. You can see a little more closely. Um, when you have a node available, so you can see the, the, the first node down over here, a uh, physical server that you're ready to deploy a compute node on, you have uh, a number of options of what kind of compute node you want that device to be. Um, it can be a Hyper-V node, it can be a KVM node, it can be a uh, Qmu node, it can be Zen, or it can be VMware. So in this case, I've dragged Compute1 into VMware and said, I want to deploy the vCenter proxy um, into that node. Um, you just come up with the next screen. It says, OK, what's the, I what's the IP address of vCenter? What's your username? What's your password? And which clusters are you going to pick up from vCenter uh, to pull into your OpenStack environment? So pretty straightforward, pretty, uh, pretty easy. Once you've done that, it's, it's, it's all going to be available. We've also got a plug-in for Cinder. Um, I didn't show the pull down, but if you, when, when you say I want to configure Cinder, you get a number of different uh, selections, one of which is VMware, which is actually the NSX driver. Once you pick the NSX driver, again, same kind of idea. What's your username? What's your password? Which controllers are you using? You know, what's the transport zone? What are the, what are the gateways? So it really leads you through the whole process to go through, uh, quickly stand up an OpenStack environment and integrate that with your existing VMware uh, infrastructure. Um, and this one, again, is another eye chart, but once you uh, get all that set up, when you go into vCenter, um, you can now see here's, here's the network that's attached to, um, to OpenStack, and you can see when you go into the, uh, to the cluster environment, you can see that the, that the, that the OpenStack-based, um, the, the, the cluster that you've assigned to OpenStack now shows up in vCenter as well. So you can still take advantage of all the vCenter uh, management capabilities even within your OpenStack environment. So that's a quick overview. Any questions, uh, obviously you can stop by our booth or, or catch us after the, after the session. OK. Thanks, Thank Dan. you very much. So next we have Nick from Mirantis, who's going to, I believe, run through a demo. And we need to do a quick switch of laptops here.
OK, can everybody hear me? All right, marvelous. So, um, so I've got six minutes, so I'm going to uh, try and make this short and sweet. Um, I am, uh, my name is Nick Chase. I'm from Morantis. We're the number one pure play open stack company on the market, which basically means all we do is open stack. We don't sell hardware. We don't sell operating systems. Open stack is all that we care about. Um, today, I am going to show you a demo, a recorded demo of VMware and OpenStack. So a little bit of a, um, little bit of a relief from the PowerPoint uh, for the most part. Take for granted the fact that we do have an excellent services and support um, organization since <laughs> I only have six minutes. Um, if we take a look at the general roadmap, what you can see here is that for each of these major OpenStack projects, there's a sort of corresponding VMware product. The idea is that you can use OpenStack, uh, but if you're a VMware shop, you can continue to use the VMware tools that you're familiar with to manage those resources. Um, for example, uh, the most obvious would be that you can create OpenStack VMs with Nova and then manage them with the vCenter tools, or you can use NSX as the basis for your Neutron uh, deployment. But as you can see here, you can also use um, vCenter data store as the back end for Cinder and Glance, and you can think about integrating Keystone with VMware single sign-on through open source drivers, uh, that sort of thing. Um, okay, so how does it work? Well, speaking for a moment about compute and storage, um, how it works is that we have the OpenStack API, uh, which uses the vSphere driver to connect to vCenter. And I'm going to pause this for a minute because I got ahead of me. Um, and uh, from there, it's basically just a normal uh, vSphere deployment. Let me go back just slightly. No, I won't. Um, it's the same thing for the NSX deployment where basically you have the NSX drivers that connect to the NSX controller and then you work from, uh, from VMware. So uh, let's take a look at a demo of how this actually works. Uh, so what you have is uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, create a data center. Um, th again, this is time compressed. So what I've done is basically recorded the demo and cut out the boring parts where you wait for stuff. So we're going to create a data center and um, create a cluster in the data center. And I don't know what keeps banging, but I apologize for it. <sighs> um, and then uh, within there, we're going to go ahead and add the uh, host, which would be your normal ESX host. So um, at this point, this is all just normal VMware stuff. And so all your VMware people are probably going, why are you even showing me this? Um, and I'm doing it for a couple of reasons. Um, one is I want to show you that this is really just plain old VMware. We're not doing anything special uh, at that point. Uh, but also, uh, there are a couple of steps that are necessary for, uh, for the integration. Um, specifically, uh, specifically in this demo, we're going to be using uh, Nova Network. So we need to make sure that we have uh, the switch set up uh, with VR, BR100, and you can see there the, v, the VLAN ID of 103. Uh, we're going to use that in a minute. So uh, this is fuel. I'm going to stop this for a second. Boy, this is just, <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting tired trying to keep up with this thing. Um, so basically, this is fuel, and um, it is the open source, um, it is the open source deployment tool that comes along with uh, Moranis OpenStack, which is the Moranis uh, distribution of uh, OpenStack. Now, uh, basically what you're going to do here is you're going to go ahead and um, specify what you want. Um, let, me, let me just kind of go here for a minute. This is crazy. So this is for one, um, so you can see where you get it. You can choose um, Havana, uh, but uh, 5.0, which will be out very shortly, uh, it lets you choose uh, Ice House as well. You can choose whether you want HA or not, but the important thing here is that you can choose uh, vCenter as your hypervisor. So um, once you do that, you can go on to choose your other things. We're going to choose Nova Network now. Fu future versions will let you also deploy with um, NSX, but that's coming s later this year. You can uh, include Ceph. You can include um, other uh, products. Obviously, I recorded this before Savannah changed to Sahara. Um, but we'll keep that simple for now. All right, so we go in and we create, now we need to go ahead and add our nodes to the cluster. So um, 
we're going to say, all right, I need to add a node. And what we need is, all we need is a controller, because everything else is handled by VMware. So I'm going to say I want a controller. I'm going to look at the nodes that I have available. These are auto-detected by Fuel, so I don't need to specify what it is or anything like that. Uh, Fuel will also let me see what the specifications of the hosts are, uh, so I can make sure that they're going to be appropriate. Um, I can figure things. Now, if you remember, we set the uh, VLAN ID as 103. And here you see it um, on, the, uh, on the fixed network. So that was why we had to make sure we knew what that was. So that's, how we're, that's part of the way that we're going to communicate between OpenStack and uh, vCenter. So um, going forward, what is that noise? Somebody else have their mic on? <laughs> All right. So um, going forward, if we go to the settings, you can see that um, as before. So we specify that we, need, we want to use vCenter as a hypervisor. We're going to say, OK, this is, our, uh, this is the IP for the vCenter uh, server. We uh, include the admin username and password so that we can talk to it. Um, oh, of course, sure, now it slows down. Um, and then we're specifying also the cluster name that we, um, that we added when we created it in vCenter. So that is how we're kind of tying those two environments together. Um, and I wanted to show you that because it's, it's great to see kind of the high level, yes, these two products talk to each other, but okay, how exactly? So um, that's why we're doing this. So as you can see here, um, later you'll be able to specify your NSX uh, information as well. Um, other parameters that you might want to set um, so you don't need to um, edit configuration files and so on. So we're going to save those settings and go ahead and deploy the cluster. Any second now. There we go. So we're going to deploy the cluster. It's going to tell us, oh, you need a compute node. But we don't need a compute node because VMware is going to handle that for us. So it will go ahead and do the installation. Um, and at this point, I'm going to compress our time compression already by flipping over to an already completed cluster. Oh, no, not so fast. Um, so um, if we go over to Horizon, we can see that uh, the hypervisor, the, the vCenter server shows up as the available hypervisor. So any host that we create, that's where they're going to go, any VMs that we create, rather. If we head on back to vCenter and we look at our data center and we look at the cluster that's associated with that OpenStack cluster, we can see we don't have any virtual machines yet. We can see virtual machines at zero. So if we go back over to Horizon and we launch a VM, it doesn't matter what's on it. We're just going to launch a you know, plain old empty VM for the moment. Um, we can see that um, as soon as it comes up, um, it will appear over on the VMware side, so uh, over in vCenter, so that we can manage it from vCenter. So we can start it, stop it, do whatever we want to do uh, from vCenter. Uh, and that brings us to six minutes. <laughs> Any quick questions? Okay, great, that's my time. Thank you very much, everybody. Well, thank you very much, Nick, for that super compressed demo. It's pretty <laughs> impressive that you can get it all done in eight minutes or less, six <laughs> minutes. Yeah, so. So um, that kind of wraps it up, but I just want to say once again, as VMware, our goal is to provide customers with a choice of what distribution they want to use um, for OpenStack on top of vSphere. And we're really excited to have all of these uh, partner vendors working with us. And thank you very much for having these super speedy <laughs> presentations. And we appreciate all the great work you've done. And just, just one other thing. If anybody's interested in uh, Canonical and VMware, we have people with collateral at the back, white papers on our deployments, the architectures, and all the cool stuff I outlined. So okay, enjoy yourselves. Thank you. So I think we have. Um I think we have a little bit of a break, and then, um, and then after following up on this, there's a talk on Congress, which is a new policy project that VMware is a part of in, in OpenStack, and then after that, there's a vSAN talk. So, thanks.